Our next guest is actually going to come up and talk again about solving their own, their own pain, right? Uh, manufacturing their own aspirin. Obviously, OCP, the power requirements, uh, and the rack, uh, the physical rack requirements, is an aggressive uh, sort of technology to adopt all at once. So a, a bridge was required. Um, so please help me uh, join Brian Obernesser, who is the director of data center architecture for Fidelity in talking about the open bridge rack. I'm very happy to be here today to talk about some of the, uh, the innovations taking place uh, within Fidelity, specifically in the open rack space. To tell a little bit about the story, I want to give you a little bit of background about Fidelity's involvement in OCP to date. We'll talk a little bit about our challenges that we've had with open rack specifically. We'll talk about how the open bridge rack idea was born, and then we'll get into the specifics around the design itself. Fidelity's been involved in the OCP since its inception. We participated in several projects, uh, as well as some of the tracks. Some examples of, of our participation are our contributions to the requirements gathering for the Roadrunner motherboard design. Uh, we participated in and now are sponsoring the uh, OCP hackathons. And we participated and led the CNI track. In addition to the obvious benefits of the mechanical and electrical efficiencies on the hardware side, Fidelity embraces the spirit of innovation, open collaboration that's so prevalent in the community today. We're very, very proud to be able to contribute back to the community that we've learned so much from. But when it comes to adopting OCP hardware for Fidelity, it starts with the rack. We had some challenges with the initial open rack designs. You know, there are the obvious incompatibilities between EIA and OCP hardware. But for us, the adoption of OCP hardware meant rack replacement. Power systems were sometimes welded to the racks, meaning that manufacturers would have to operate or design outside their core competencies. For example, a rack manufacturer may have to determine or develop and produce a power distribution system for that rack, and vice versa. Serviceability was a challenge as well. Some of these welded components were difficult or impossible to access if they required repair or any need to address them. What this meant was that the initial OCP open rack designs were just not ready for enterprise consumption. So that led us to set out and design our own. We submitted an idea to the hackathon almost a year ago today. We participated in the hackathon in January 2013. We submitted the idea of a convertible rack that would go from 19 to OCP and vice versa. A team of five was, was put together at that hackathon, and we produced the first schematics of what was deemed the back rack at the time, now the open bridge rack. To be quite honest, it was uh, extremely bulky, heavy, difficult to manufacture, and expensive. But this led, for us, uh, uh, led to a search for us to find strategic partners in the industry with some experience with manufacturing these components and ultimately, it brought us to where we are today. The open bridge rack benefits. The rack itself is compatible with both EIA and OCP hardware. It, we can convert those racks from the EIA standards to OCP in a very rapid and simple, easy process. We've disaggregated the power from the rack. No longer is it a welded solution. This allows subject matter experts and manufacturers to innovate within their respective areas. It allows Fidelity to respond to the changing rack demands in our environment. So as we begin to adopt OCP hardware, we can simply convert racks in place, on the floor, gang together from EIA to OCP. And if there's ever a need to go back, we can do so. What's most important about the design is it's vendor agnostic. Because we've separated the rack from the power, we can collaborate with manufacturers in their respective core competencies and create an environment where we have collaboration, but also create competition, ultimately driving down the price and the cost of the racks themselves. So without further ado, let's see the racks. What's really important to note in these rack designs, what was very important to us, 
from the initial concept was the desire to create a solution that was still open for innovation, customization. These racks are adjustable in width, depth, and height. They come with bolt-on accessories that are highly customizable. And that's for aesthetics, security, airflow, and cable management. The rack on my right, the 19-inch version of the rack, both the racks are the same framing system. They are 28 inches wide by 48 inches deep and 83 inches high. That's to accommodate a seven-foot door height in some of our legacy facilities. That translates to 43 rack units of EIA capacity or 40 OUs of OCP capacity. The power cells themselves are three OUs each, two in our, in our dual power zone design, consuming six OUs total, with the remaining 34 OUs of OU IT capability. We've just completed a taller rack design with these same components. That rack is approximately seven foot six high, 48 RUs of capacity, 44 OUs of capacity, and will be leveraged in our strategic builds. More specifically, our center core growth with our data center strategy. These are some of the first images taken of the rack. This was our first mechanical integration test. We had the rack manufacturer bring the rack on site, electrical manufacturer bring those components on site, and we integrated the two for the first time. We were very surprised that it went off without a hitch. We timed the event, so the images on the left are clearly the 19-inch version of the rack and the OCP version on the right. We did our first conversion from EIA to OCP and timed it it was a total of 75 minutes. But there was a lot of sequencing errors. We were manipulating components that created conflicts during that conversion process. So what we did was we backed up and scripted those conversion instructions. We estimate that time to be no more than 45 minutes without experience. And clearly, the more racks you convert, the more efficient that process will become. So let's talk about the internal components. The most innovative components inside the rack are the vertical rails. In the 19-inch version, you can see the standard cage nut mounting solution. What's important about these vertical rails is they're dual-sided. So this is the EIA face of the rack. There's also an OCP interface on those vertical posts inside the rack. The conversion process is very simple. You simply remove, rotate, reinstall. The conversion kit itself is made up of three major components. Obviously, the electrical distribution, which consists of the power bus, the power shelves themselves, and PDUs if that's part of your application. But we also, the other two components are the wire managers located at the front of the rack, now managing that communications cabling that's moved to the cold aisle. And there's a power bus adapter kit at the rear of the rack. That adapter kit is highly customizable. So in our solution, it's a dual zone power solution where each power bus attaches to the rack at four points. But it's highly customizable and easily adapted to your mounting method and power zone solution of your design. What's also important about these components, both the wire managers and the adapter kit, is they serve as blocking mechanisms inside the rack. You'll always ensure that your internal rails are always at their appropriate pos uh, positions per the OCP standard. They make sure that the rails are square and at their, pro their proper positions in order to accommodate those hardware types. The electrical components themselves, again, we have a dual zone solution with two power shelves servicing each zone. These are 400 volt 2N power solutions to be used in our strategic data centers. We're also finalizing a design on 208 volt power solution where we'll have an upper and a lower zone. Both of those designs will have a 15 kW capability for that rack. Uh, one of the most recent innovations in the space um, came about uh, as we designed some of our uh, carrier rooms for our um, strategic uh, build that's taking place at this time. We had a requirement for our telco providers where they require 23-inch rails inside the rack. Our desire was to try to leverage these open bridge racks wherever possible. So just last week, we completed a new rail design that can now be adopt adapted between 19-inch and 23-inch hardware. Um, and we'll be using those in our carrier rooms for our telco providers. What's being contributed today? We're contributing three files one of which is a specifications document, and that documents 
the intended use of the rack, its functionality from a conversion process, but more importantly, we're going to be contributing the 3D schematics to the rack, both the 19-inch version and the OCP version for anyone to manufacture and consume. Since we, uh, since we showed the racks in October 2013 at an engineering summit, we received a lot of feedback from the community. We received it back from integrators, co-location facilities, and consumers. The integrators were interested in one rack that could accommodate two IT standards. Co-location facilities were interested in one rack where they could modify it on the floor for varying customer requirements. And for us, the consumers, we were interested in one rack where we could respond to our internal capacity demand. At this time, I would like to give special thanks to some of the companies that participated in the development of the solution, two of which would otherwise be competitors, all of which were open to collaborating on design, but more importantly, contributing back to the community. So at this time, I'd like Electrorack, Delta, and CTS, please stand and be recognized by the community for your contributions back to them. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to thank you all for this opportunity to share some of our latest innovations in OpenRack. We look forward to our continued participation in OCP. Um, we'll also, anyone who is interested in further detail on the racks or like to get hands on with them, we will be sharing these in the open rack track. Please join us in the open rack track this afternoon um, as well as tomorrow. And we're happy to dive into the details on the rack themselves or perhaps the story behind their evolution. Thank you.